I, th I think uh, conservation is a really a mainstream word. Um, I think that's something they had to develop because it didn't come natural in their society. In my culture, in my world, in my Cree nation, I, th I think uh, 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 maintenance and sustainability was just a part of who we are as a people. We never had to create something to do. It was just what God gave us as a people to always manage, to be the custodians, to be the protectors, to be the caregivers, and to make sure that it was there for future generations. So what we've done is, is we're going back to our roots and our inherent rights um, and responsibilities. And I, I, I prefer to use responsibilities sometimes over rights because that's a, a stronger, that governs our, our, our rights, is our responsibilities, right? If, if we kill all the fish in, in a lake, then our inherent right to, to harvest them is gone. So our responsibility is much stronger. The message here is to Indigenous and non-Indigenous community. In this room we have Indigenous folks from all over Ontario, the conservation community, provincial crown and federal crown and creating the proper relationship to create Indigenous-led protected areas. We have the last largest end of uh, Carolina forest left. It's something I, I like bragging on. I, you know, every time I do these talks, I, I bring that up. I like to brag on that fact. But I'm also sad, you know, sad that it's the last one. You think about it this way, at, at one time, not that long ago, you know, less than 200 years ago, you could walk from Lake Erie to Lake Huron and never leave the bush. Where do you learn best? And I said, well, right there, right on that land. We need to start having those conversations that if we want to go forward, let's go outside. Let's indulge in those grassroots initiatives who have been doing it. More than that, I think that we are going to have these conversations about protected areas. Um, let's get out there. Let's start um, bringing these communities together. And no matter where we are, I think we need to come together on that land. Our Chinook Nagewen now, although it's written on paper, which is our, our supreme law, um, you know, it just kind of fits with the time now. We're, we're relearning who we are, and so we write these things down to remind ourselves that this is who we are and these are our values, these are the rules that we need to follow. And it, it makes transparency for, for our modern day governance, right? To ensure the people that their, their rights are protected, but it also uh, demonstrates and clearly indicates what our responsibilities are as a government and as people. For the longest time they wouldn't accept that knowledge that we had about taking care of the land. But now they see that their system ain't working so now they're coming looking for knowledge from us, the wisdom from us. One thing I found was each person that I do share with they get that sense of responsibility of taking care of the earth, taking care of the forest, the land. So with each building of a canoe, or each person that I do show, they get that sense of responsibility, you know. Um, it's almost like it's a, an inbuilt or instinct that kicks in. I brought up this Western scientist who said, with decades of good science addressing the priorities of our day, habitat destruction, species loss, climate change, I've come to realize those aren't the main problems. The main problems are culture and spirituality. Our knowledge systems can fill that void, that by, by coming together, we can bring the strength in those, those areas. The imperative uh, to actually um, uh, act in a way that is uh, compatible with nature uh, is what's missing. It's, 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 and that's a knowledge system, uh, understanding that uh, what, what, how you are affecting the environment and when you see those changes, when you see evidence of these changes, that you adapt your behavior, you correct your behavior, that's not really happening or it certainly is not happening fast enough. At the end of the day, you know, that whole process, it's all about land. So when we come to the realization that if we're going to maintain our connections to land, then we're going to have to maintain our own cultural integrity, our language, our ways of life. And at the same time, you know, to look at our inherent rights as Indigenous peoples and using them to be able to protect and to maintain the integrity of the places that we're living. And we do that not just for our benefit as Indigenous peoples, but we do that for the benefit of, of society in general. 
they get to enjoy you know the benefits of that and when they partner with us in that kind of joint effort then all of a sudden it's a it's a really unique opportunity to be able to move forward so coming to the realization that colonization is everywhere the necessity of decolonizing ourselves but more specifically for us as indigenous peoples is that it's not about not just about decolonization it's about revitalization it's about revitalizing ourselves and revitalizing the indigenous mind of what it takes to live in place to understand our language our culture our ceremonies that we have an obligation and a, and a responsibility to ensure the integrity of the places that we're living in we all have this thing we're working toward that is much bigger than us it's much bigger than you know those to come it's that seven generations that's so important so let's start now we need the inclusion of our youth because we're ready and we have been ready we're going to carry this with the guidance of our land and our elders i think what, what youth have to do is is break free from the shackles of the previous generations that have really caused this mess and and allow for the the uh, business as usual the status quo uh, to continue your idea of conserving and our idea of conserving are two different things. They're, they're, they've got a lot of regulations and stipulations on what, what cannot be done. And often don't recognize the beings, the plants and the animals that are there and the fact that they don't necessarily follow those boundaries and sometimes they'd like to get out of there. So there's, different, there's differences. We want to conserve and protect lands in different ways that include us because we are part of the land. We come from it, we're, we're here. And we want to see that continue into the future. We've got, a, we've got both our language, our culture, our ceremonies, our traditional ways of life, our laws, our customs to learn. And at the same time, we also have science, technology, uh, biodiversity. We have all of those other areas to be able to learn as well. But man, you put them together and that's a formidable human being. That's a fully engaged human being that has the capacity to do that. The realization that, that maybe it's not that about that we can learn everything, maybe it's about having the opportunity to collaborate with people that are rich in those areas and bring those people together to learn from one another and to be able to make the positive change that's necessary to ensure that life will continue.